How low would you go to get rich? Everyone has a price for forsaking their dignity in order to acquire some cold, hard cash. But for a majority of people, that price is in the range of being set for life if it means irreversible humiliation. Figures in the ballpark of 10 to $20 million will make almost anyone do almost anything if it means they don't have to go back to their 9 to 5 wage cages. And this sentiment is largely shown on YouTube as well. Creators like Nikocado Avocado have inflated their body to elephant size by consuming dump truck portions of food, along with playing an over-exaggerated character that screams all the time, in order to extract as much monetary gain as possible. And for the most part, it's worked out for him. Even if Nick isn't enviable in his physical appearance, he's still become a multi-millionaire, and that's something others have coveted and tried to replicate. Now imagine doing what Nick does, but the character is actually just your personality, without the money, fame, or any of the positive benefit at all. And you pretty much have the online career of foodie beauty, or Chantal, a fashion YouTuber turned lolcow after her unintentional success from oversharing as she consumed lasagna. Even though most of Chantal's stories are always accompanied by her scarfing down food, I highly recommend you guys do the opposite when watching this. It's impressive how she can go into full detail about things like sharts, farts, and projectile diarrhea squirting without throwing up as she munches away. The barf goes projectile all over the wall. The poop goes all over their floor. At a glance, Chantal looks like just another unfortunate soul struggling with weight problems. But don't be fooled. Digging deeper into her six year long history on YouTube reveals a roller coaster ride of vanity, drug addiction, failed weight loss attempts, abusive relationships, cuckoldry, cancer, Islam, and kneeling before the monster mash, pledging her allegiance to the graveyard smash. Although she may look similar to Nick in appearance, her career couldn't be closer to the opposite. In fact, the only other similarity she shares is an overabundance of hate watchers that most likely make up a majority of her viewer base. Well, that and feeders. But how did she get here? How do you gain the same notoriety of someone like Ikikado Avocado, yet maintain an audience that's a fraction of his size? Today, we'll uncover that and much more as we journey together through the story of the foodie beauty. Chantal Serrault was born March 28, 1984, to a teen mother named Kim that traveled around frequently and a father that left her while she was still a kid. Growing up without a stable father figure in her life had left her with what some might describe as daddy issues. Kim had done her best to provide, but there were certain aspects of Chantal's emotional development that couldn't be fully addressed through a single parent. Her mother eventually married her stepfather, yet Chantal could never get over her biological father leaving her prematurely, and has even stated that she has two brothers on her dad's side she's never met. One of the main sources of Chantal's inner turmoil is her jealousy of her younger sister Natalie, who, unlike her, was born with the presence of both their mother and stepfather. According to an old childhood friend, Chantal couldn't help but feel a sense of resentment as she watched Natalie experience the stability of a two-parent household. So, she would pick on her and say things like she was ugly and dumb. While it's never been fully confirmed if this is an exaggeration created by her now estranged friend, this behavior wouldn't be out of the ordinary for a child with abandonment issues. Chantal growing up being jealous of her sister was just the start of her childhood problems. Whatever the cause, she would begin dating a 21-year-old man at the age of just 15. And this, I would, when I first met him I was 15 and he was 21 so yeah kind of uh, to begin with I mean I was a mature younger person but <laughs> Chantal alludes that this guy she hooked up with was abusive and had a serious alcohol issue, but never has gone into specifics. Obviously, this was a predatory individual looking to manipulate her as a 15-year-old, but the way she talks about him almost sounds like just a bad boyfriend when it was clearly way worse. Horrifyingly, Chantal lost her virginity to this man and later elaborates that he actually had his own girlfriend with whom he had a child. To make matters worse, this other girlfriend had gone out of her way to confront a 15-year-old Chantal at school threatening her with violence, among other things. By now, Chantal was convinced that she was in love with this 21-year-old man, so she decided to continue screwing her boyfriend. Her words, not mine. This guy lied to me in and out, okay? I didn't know that this guy had a girlfriend who was pregnant with his child. A girlfriend who liked to fight, and she was older. She was in her uh, mid-20s. This girl tried to make my life hell when she found out about me. Like, why don't you attack him? Why me? I didn't know about you, you know? But... At that point, I was already like really in love with him, and or so I thought. And I was, and she was so mean about it that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna keep screwing your boyfriend. And I know that's bad. I would never do that now. But when you're young and dumb, right? 
Her parents eventually became aware of this, but for unknown reasons never decided to contact the authorities. Instead, they just told her she wasn't allowed to go see him anymore, which went as well as you would expect it to go. Furious that she couldn't sleep over with this man, Chantal went into the bathroom and faked a suicide attempt to try coercing her parents into letting her go. This caused her mom to panic and take her to the hospital, where she was instructed to drink a charcoal solution to drain the pills out of her body. Scared that this might negatively affect her body because she hadn't actually taken any pills, Chantal went into the bathroom and actually popped a few before confessing the truth to her doctor. At this point, the doctor had become fed up with her antics, so she was instructed to stay for a few days until they could make absolutely sure that she was fine. Even at a young age, Chantal had a reputation for gluttony, and this would be exemplified by her stay at the hospital. The girl she was sharing a room with turned out to have an eating disorder appetite opposite to Chantal, anorexia. The two began talking and got friendly with each other, but there was one particular thing Chantal couldn't help but notice. Because of this girl's anorexia, doctors came into the room regularly and gave her large amounts of food to make up for her weight loss. Watching this over time was like torture for Chantal, so one day, she dared to go where no one had gone before. But anyway, I had said to her at some point, are you gonna eat those candy? <laughs> and I think she kind of caught on because she like, she gave them to me. She gave me her candies. After getting discharged from the hospital, Chantal's parents refused to let her come home if she continued to spend time with the 21-year-old, so she was moved into a group home for teenagers. This group home is where things went from bad to worse, and is one of the pivotal things that's contributed to Chantal's corruption during her formative years. Keep in mind, Chantal was still a high schooler while living among homeless teens, and she was surrounded by crazy amounts of drug use almost every day. In her environment, underage hookups were the norm, and they slowly became the norm for her as well. Chantal has told too many hookup stories to count, but the most notable during her high school years involve her taking home a fingerless man from a bar. No, that's not a euphemism. This guy literally was missing fingers and was probably a decade older than her. When the two arrived at the bedroom to partake in activities, the guy passed out before they could do anything of note. To Chantal's horror, while they were sleeping in bed, this fingerless fellow curled up to her and started to cry for his mommy. Getting freaked out at this, Chantal saw that most of the teens in the home she was staying in smoked weed, so she wanted to get some as a means of relaxing after her experience with kidney named Finger. Big G is an individual she met while in the group home, and he clearly expressed romantic interest in her. Seeing this as an opportunity, Chantal decided to manipulate Big G by pretending that she had an interest in him so that she could get free weed. This worked out for her until the 21-year-old that she was messing around with found out about Big G, so he punched him in the face. Feeling bad and growing slightly attached to him, Chantal had sex with Big G as a way of apologizing, but she describes this as not really good because of the size of his dick, or rather, lack of size. This wasn't the only time an underage Chantal has exchanged her body for goods. On a hot summer day, someone dared her to flash her bazoongas at an elderly man in exchange for a Klondike bar, to which she promptly did just that. And while some would likely blame Chantal for a lot of this, you have to keep in mind that she was under the age of 18, and she was around the influence of adults who should have known better, and yet continually took advantage of her. After a while, according to Chantal, being with one person got boring, so she decided to make the executive decision to spice things up and start dating a 38-year-old French man alongside her 21-year-old boyfriend. Over the course of her entire high school career, Chantal would continue messing around with both of these predators until she finally graduated. It's unknown when exactly she split off with the pair, but the general assumption is sometime after high school. This wasn't even close to the end of her hookups, though, and after breaking up with her manipulative boyfriends, her sexual encounters actually got way worse. But it should be clear by this moment that this girl, who had been kicked out of her house by her parents, was serially being taken advantage of by sexual predators. Coming from her mouth, it's always framed as less serious, but that is what's happening here. And just as a disclaimer moving forward, these stories aren't uncovered via super hackers digging through her personal information, but they're told straight from Chantal on YouTube. All of these videos have since been deleted, but the question still arises as to what would possess someone to upload these for everyone to see on the internet. A common theory is that none of these things have actually happened, and Chantal has just been lying to get views. But most people would point to the fact that she deleted these, presumably after realizing the horrors released upon the world. Chantal does have a proven habit of lying, but for the sake of argument, we'll be taking her word on most of these stories. When mature adults become sexually aroused in public, they typically strive to contain their desires until they reach the privacy of their home, where they can do personal activities alone. It's evident that Chantal does not conform to the norms of adulthood and is truly a girl boss. On a particular night after leaving a bar, she found herself in a state of arousal. Instead of heading home to address her desires privately, she engaged in a spontaneous sexual encounter with a homeless guy in a public area by a lake, on top of a rock. This wasn't just a quickie either, this was the, you know, the full-blown thing, and she even says that she got tested for HIV 
HIV afterwards. At least she's responsible enough to do that. As touched upon earlier, Chantal displayed a willingness to use her physical assets to attain her desires, particularly when it involved food. Getting to the point of desperation on one particular Whopper Wednesday, she called up one of her lovers and offered him foreplay in exchange for him bringing her a few burgers. To her dismay, the guy had tragically forgotten the zesty sauce for her onion rings, and she got so upset about this that she only allowed him one squeeze of her knockers. Probably the most infamous hookup Chantal has had is a threesome she tried organizing with a couple online. Chantal was an active user of IRC, an early form of internet communication, and often tried e-dating people on this platform. On one occasion, she encountered a couple and entertained the idea of threesome with them while deceptively concealing her true weight and identity. Chantal visited their apartment, hoping they wouldn't discern her real self. Inevitably, when the people eventually discovered that she was, in fact, catfishing them, they opted not to proceed with their planned encounter, leading Chantal to spend the night on their couch. The next morning, she woke up with a nauseous feeling in her stomach and sprinted for the bathroom. Kneeling down by the toilet ready to blow, Chantal erupted from both ends in a double stream of puke and diarrhea splashing all over the bathroom. The walls were painted green and the floor was painted brown. After turning this poor couple's bathroom into a biohazard, Chantal realized her romantic life might need a change. She needed someone who she could depend on and foster a stable, blossoming relationship with. She needed Pete's. Chantal met Pete's back in her high school senior year after sharing an English class with him. She describes that both of them were awkward kids and they quickly became friends. After graduating from high school, the two shared a job at a local call center and eventually moved in together, resulting in a romantic relationship. For the next seven years, Chantal and Pete's bond grew stronger, which culminated in an accepted proposal of marriage. This was also the same time that Chantal started to gain an enormous amount of weight due to neither her nor Pete's knowing how to cook. Normal meals were usually just eating at a fast food place, and Chantal has even admitted to going into debt on account of all the fast food she had ordered. However, for an unspecified reason, Chantal says that she grew out of love with Pete's, which is code for started cheating on him. People have speculated on the real reason as to why Chantal began cheating on Pete's, and the general assumption is that she became dissatisfied with the relationship because of her uncontrollable urges. Regardless, for the next few months, she would start going behind Pete's back with a Rwandan man she had met at a club, along with e-dating another guy on IRC named BB. Her fling with the Rwandan man ended shortly after meeting BB in person. According to Chantal, BB had that W Riz in the bedroom, and they kept the neighbors up all night. This was, of course, in a hotel bedroom due to the fact that Pete's was still blissfully unaware of anything happening. Getting increasingly annoyed and not being able to come home with her new lover, Chantal broke up with Pete's and fully confessed to him about her adultery. Pete's was absolutely devastated and continually begged Chantal to stay, going as far as saying that he didn't care who she slept with as long as she and him could keep dating and living under the same roof. She rejected this offer and promptly moved in with BB. After a seven-year-long relationship, Pete's was left alone. Looking at his Twitter over the next few years reveals that he was struggling pretty hard with this. Chantal had said they could still be friends, but it looked like he wasn't taking it very well, and it's hard not to feel a little bad for the guy. That face when it's been six years since someone broke your heart and you're still giving them money. My fiance broke up with me six years ago. We started off as friends before we dated, so we stayed friends when we broke up. In the past six years, she's borrowed tons of money, only rarely paying anything back, and unfortunately, I'm bad at saying no to her. So I just gave her another $200 for her shitty cat, who sucks. Following her breakup and subsequent move in with BB, Chantal got a job in healthcare administration, ironic, while BB got a job as a security guard. Coincidentally, her job was at the same psychiatric hospital she had been enrolled in all those years ago as a child. She worked here for six months until she applied full time because she enjoyed the position so much. Her pay was a generous $29 an hour, and the job description was being a secretary. But soon Soon after, Chantal found herself at odds with her supervisors. She began to get tired and felt overworked, setting what she considered to be an overbearing management style. Instead of addressing her concerns through open communication or seeking alternative solutions, Chantal chose to just falsely call in sick and started missing a good amount of days. As this pattern of fabricated sick days continued, it didn't take long for her colleagues and superiors to become suspicious. Ultimately, she was fired, but she was still compensated as a part of a settlement agreement. It's assumed that by late 2016, 
2016, this payment wasn't enough, and that's why she started uploading to her YouTube channel. BB was bringing in enough money for both of them at the time, and due to the recent success she had witnessed with YouTubers getting rich, she thought it was a good idea to try it out herself. In its early stages, her channel predominantly revolved around beauty-related content, encompassing makeup tutorials, product reviews, and beauty tips. Chantal presented herself as a reserved and somewhat introverted personality, showing a quiet and understated demeanor that would seem out of the ordinary in retrospect. Despite putting a lot of effort into her beauty theme videos, Chantal faced an uphill battle in terms of gaining significant viewership and engagement. Her makeup tutorials weren't bad by any means, but compared to more popular channels of this genre, they didn't stand out. The beauty niche was highly competitive, making it challenging for her to break through and garner the audience she wanted to reach. One day, perhaps driven by curiosity, but more likely hunger, she decided to upload a mukbang video that featured her indulging in a massive, delectable lasagna meal. This departure from her beauty-focused content marked a watershed moment for her channel. To her surprise, this mukbang video garnered a significant amount of attention and attracted more views than any of her previous uploads. This unexpected success sparked the transformation of her channel into what we now know as foodie beauty. As views rolled in, Chantal gradually had a distinct shift in content and persona. Her channel evolved to becoming a hub for all things food, and she discarded beauty content altogether. The success of the lasagna video began the start of a phase where she started to over share personal stories while consuming whatever food she was reviewing. And by reviewing, I mean shoving it in her face. These stories gained a reputation for often being highly intimate and usually flat out gross as demonstrated with the previously mentioned bathroom incident. This oversharing and a more expressive personality became integral to her content, making it distinct from the reserved demeanor she once projected. Moreover, Chantal's newfound direction in content creation attracted what some might consider to be a unique and dedicated following, particularly those interested in feeder content. For those of you fortunate enough to not know what a feeder is, allow me to ruin your day real quick. According to the National Library of Medicine, feederism is a fat subculture in which individuals eroticize weight gain and feeding. Feeders are individuals who claim to become sexually aroused by feeding their partners and encouraging them to gain weight. Very little is known about this population. What little is known about this subculture has probably been studied via Chantal's comment section. It's unknown how aware she was of this at the time, but in any case, Case, her content definitely fulfilled some viewers in more ways than one. Hey you, good to see you again. I'm like a little kid in the candy store. Damn, you look so beautiful, my friend. Love the video. Kisses and hugs. Love you. XO, XO. Although her content revolved around devouring copious amounts of food while sharing personal anecdotes, Chantal always had expressed her interest in wanting to lose weight. Even before the lasagna video, she openly discussed being ashamed of her weight gain and even stated plans to incorporate exercise into her routine. Two weeks after her big break, Chantal started to realize making this successful content was rewarding her binging habit, and that this could lead to an extremely unhealthy cycle. In a video titled Subscriber Q&A, Answering All Your Questions, she says that mukbangs would have to take a backseat in her channel, as her primary focus would now be on prioritizing her health. This was a moment of hope for her growing audience that weren't feeders. They genuinely believed Chantal might truly be committed to her goals of losing weight. Sadly, this optimism was short-lived. Merely two days after her declaration of a content and lifestyle shift, Chantal walked back her statement and announced that while junk food would not be the mainstay of her videos, it would still make appearances as an occasional treat. This abrupt reversal left her audience confused, as this clearly wasn't going to help her lose weight. Throughout this time, Chantal shared her thoughts on her weight loss journey in one of her videos, indicating that she was actively considering various options to shed excess weight. Her content briefly reflected her renewed commitment to health as she began incorporating healthier food choices into her mukbangs. However, the allure of fast food and indulgent eating habits proved impossible to resist for Chantal. Her commitment to healthy eating quickly faded, and her videos reverted to their previous patterns. This back and forth left her viewers disappointed and started to build a slow resentment from a portion of her audience. In a last-ditch effort to maintain her audience's trust and potentially create a divide between her mukbang content and healthier living, Chantal created a second channel dedicated solely to her weight loss journey. Obviously, her fans were not that easily deceived. They saw through this and commented that the unhealthy eating habits persisted, and there was no point in eating healthy on one channel if she was going to do the opposite on her main. The criticism escalated eventually pushing Chantal to address her audience directly. Early on, she had seemed candid on the criticisms and advice she had received, but now it looked like she was flat out angry. I'm closing my weight loss channel. My other channel, I'm shutting it down. I am too picky to deal with, you know, all these experts in, you know, in diet, and then these people who are like, well, you wouldn't get hate if you wouldn't tell people that you're losing weight or you're vegan. You know what? You're right, so I'm not going to. 
I saw Amber Lynn Reed's video of her no more weight loss journey and I understand why because it's sickening. It's sickening, sickening. No matter what you do, people think you're you're eating bad. You eat a fucking piece of fruit and people think that you're like, you know, like, no, I can't handle that. People need to worry about themselves. This is a mukbang channel. So if you can't handle watching someone big eat something, go watch a skinny bitch eat a salad, okay? This rift between Chantal and her viewers deepened as she continued to reject any form of criticism. Rather than considering constructive feedback or addressing concerns, she responded with an increasing level of anger and defensiveness. Her initial approach to her viewers, who had enjoyed her openness, began to devolve into one of disconnection and hostility. Attempts by her audience to offer guidance or express genuine concern were met with anger, and constructive criticism found itself drowned out by her growing animosity. With each passing day, Chantal's transformation into a more polarizing figure became all the more apparent. Her disdain for her viewers seemed to intensify with every video upload, and the inverse was true as well. As this strained relationship kept going on, it reached a breaking point when Chantal made a confession in one of her videos. She admitted that, behind the scenes, she had been engaging in binge eating episodes, rendering any healthy food choices she had previously showcased on her channel essentially useless. This revelation was a breaking point for many viewers, and the dislikes reflected that. Chantal noticed this ratio and got so upset that she would pin a comment, saying, The 200 dislikes is proof that so many do not understand food addiction and have a condemning attitude towards it. If I was a heroin addict, though, the sympathy would be pouring in. This experience makes me want to reconsider sharing my personal life online. People want you to be honest and real, and then ridicule you when you are. Chantal Chantal's discontent with her viewers was palpable, and it seemed that her frustration was escalating. She even posted videos wherein she talked about the toll that the mounting criticism was taking on her mental health. At times, she declared that she was finished discussing her weight on the channel altogether, and that mukbangs were just going to be her life now. This animosity that brewed within her seemed to physically manifest when, in September 2017, Chantal received a diagnosis that she had ovarian cysts. These cysts had the potential to interfere with various hormonal processes, posing a threat to her fertility. It looked like this was a sobering wake-up call for Chantal, and initially, she responded by, again, attempting to adhere to a healthier diet. At first, she actually did keep a healthy diet for a few weeks, and it finally looked like she was on the right track. Unfortunately, this was short-lived. On October 26, 2017, in a video that would leave many viewers disheartened, she returned right back to her old habits by consuming a mammoth pizza and a brownie. In this video, she openly admitted to surrendering and giving up on her aspirations for better health. One thing that really stood out, too, was a depressing remark Chantal made that could easily be the prologue to represent her entire life. I don't remember much about my childhood, but I do remember my first bag of chips. Weeks later, she fully reverted back to her junk food consumption, repeatedly getting angry at those who criticized her choices. By this point, Chantal's viewer base had undergone a complete transformation and was now predominantly composed of hate watchers, people who tuned in not because they genuinely enjoyed her content, but because they were morbidly fascinated by the train wreck that her life had become. News of Chantal spread like wildfire across the internet, leading to discussions and threads on websites like Kiwi Farms. Through these outlets, people began to notice a recurring pattern in Chantal's behavior that she had seemingly repeated several times over. This pattern got so predictable that they aptly named it the Chantal Cycle, creating a graph that detailed what it was. A stark reflection of her inability to break free from a self-destructive loop, where she would briefly show glimpses of determination, only to once again succumb to her old habits and confrontations with her audience once again. The Chantal Cycle became a topic of fascination and discussion amongst her detractors and critics. They meticulously documented the various stages of this cycle, which typically began with declarations of intent to pursue a healthier lifestyle and promises to change her eating habits. This initial optimism would often be followed by videos of apparent dedication, during which Chantal would make an effort to incorporate healthier food choices into her content. But, almost inevitably, this commitment would crumble under the weight of her inner gluttony, leading to a return to indulgent, often excessive eating habits. Usually, she'll make a video admitting to this failure and start ranting about this binge eating disorder, threatening viewers that she will start disabling comments if they stay negative. Then eventually, she'll disable comments and go back to regular fast food mukbangs and off-camera binges. A drop in subscriber and view count is sure to follow, along with her saying things like, stop involving me in drama. This is the anger stage, as she lashes out at viewers for a bit. Finally, comments would get re-enabled and Chantal would have an emotional video where she goes through an awakening, promising that she plans to start a new diet and get her life back on track. The amount of times this cycle has been documented and repeated throughout history was truly a wonder to behold for viewers, and Chantal's infamy would continue
continue to grow as a result. The Chantal cycle in particular became a central focus of discussion, with members of these online communities attempting to predict when and how it repeated itself. Threads became a hub for those who wanted to share their perspectives, analyses, and sometimes their frustrations with Chantal. The overarching sentiment in these discussions was one of comedic disappointment. Many felt that Chantal had been given ample opportunities to make meaningful changes in her life, but that her constant backtracking and confrontational attitude had left them disillusioned. Chantal had endured a relentless barrage of negative attention for an extended period of time by now. She had faced the wrath of reaction YouTubers dissecting her content, the disapproval of viewers who once supported her, the ever-watchful eye of Kiwi Farms, and the consequences of her own choices. In an attempt to counter the relentless critiques and the growing chorus of detractors, she decided to go on the offensive and fight back in any way she could. In April, someone registered on the Kiwi Farms using the username Manic. This person asserted to have a history as an old childhood friend of Chantal and shared anecdotes about her past that I've previously mentioned. Naturally, the online community remained skeptical, given that anyone could have made this account and spun up any story they wanted to without any proof. Still, it didn't take long for the validity of Manic statements to be inadvertently confirmed, courtesy of Chantal herself. Manic revealed that Chantal sent a vitriolic email laced with insults and threats that she would report her to Child Protective Services if she didn't cease her storytelling. All bullshit excuses for you to be pissed for no reason because you have self-hatred issues, which is why you used to cut yourself and threaten suicide. And now you're taking it out on me. You sit there and talk about my eating disorder with my trolls, but what about the self-harm you used to do? Again, don't come for me unless your closet is clean, which it is not. You're in a very dark place, and I would get help for that if I were you. Tell me, how as a parent do you have the time to sign up to forums with edgy names like Manic when you were a single mother of two? What kind of example are you setting for them? If you ever mention another thing about me online, and I will be checking, I will be sending all of the screenshots to CPS in your hometown and to the authorities for harassment. Chantal would then send a second email three hours after the first. She most likely saw it get published on the thread and wanted to follow up with clarification. I don't believe a parent who spends all day online spreading bullshit and cyber harassing and getting high deserves to have children. So yes, I will make the call if I have to. What kind of example are you setting for those kids bullying others online? A few days after these emails, Chantal uploaded an apology for threatening to call CPS, but then deleted it and uploaded a never before seen reverse apology video where she takes back everything she said and doubles down. Ultimately, nothing ever came of these, but this wouldn't stop Chantal from going on a rampage. She was now in an all-out war mode and not pulling any punches. But in fairness, her initial anger, regardless of how crazy the reaction was, is somewhat understandable. Chantal, while she was morbidly obese, hadn't done anything horrible to someone else. She was just posting her life on the internet. And now, this old friend who seemingly had problems of her own was going on a forum to embarrass her relentlessly for her past with unsubstantiated claims. So on one hand, while her reaction was somewhat insane, her initial anger is honestly justified. Around now, a prevailing trend was the emergence of compilation channels that specifically targeted notorious mukbangers. Prominent figures like Nikocado Avocado and Amberlynn Reed had entire channels dedicated to creating clips showcasing the outlandish behavior, comments, and antics of these creators. Chantal was not an exception to this phenomenon. Her constant farting and discussions about her bowel movement provided ample fodder for such channels. In fact, on certain occasions, these compilation channels even outpaced her own content in terms of viewership and engagement. One such channel that operated within this niche was the Spitting Drama Llama. This channel specialized in creating content about fat creators, and Chantal, being a prominent mukbanger, inevitably became a recurring figure in their compilations. However, over the months, Chantal had become accustomed to controversy, and she had discovered a deadly tool to use copyright claims. With the power to wield copyright claims on YouTube, she could effectively remove content that portrayed her in a negative light and exert a degree of control over her online image. And it was particularly easy to her as many of these channels were just re-uploading clips from her channel, with little commentary. In noteworthy instances, she employed this tool to successfully copyright claim videos created by the spitting drama llama, but more importantly, Zachary Michael, a decently popular commentary channel. Zach was struck twice by Chantal before having to private all of his videos relating to her in fear of getting his channel terminated. Unlike Spitting Drama Llama though, Zach knew that his videos fell well within fair use, which is a provision of US copyright law allowing exceptions for critical commentary as long as you're adding something to the original work you're talking about. As a result, Zach submitted a legal counterclaim, which was accepted after Chantal realized she would have to go to civil court with Zach if she pursued. In the wake of hearing that Zach successfully got his videos back, a flood of new compilations and channels emerged. People had stopped being scared of copyright claims from Chantal, and after this she would take a break for a few weeks. 
weeks to collect her thoughts. This period of peace and prosperity for Chantal parody channels didn't last long, though. Chantal had found a new weapon of choice for deleting videos in the form of community guideline strikes. Unlike DMCA claims, YouTube community guideline strikes were manually reviewed by YouTube and often vague in terms of what was allowed. Chantal utilized this to the fullest and started sending out strike after strike to compilation channels once again. Yet, as with any tool, there were limits to its effectiveness. YouTube knew the potential misuse and instituted a safeguard. If a user issued an excessive number of community guideline strikes, YouTube would begin to take these claims less seriously. Chantal, driven by her desire to control her online image and narrative, inadvertently crossed this threshold. YouTube's moderation team was faced with a high volume of strikes originating from her account and began to scrutinize her claims more critically. Eventually, her community guideline strikes began to lose their power, forcing Chantal to revert to her previous method of copyright takedowns. Chantal would also explore various alternative treatments to treat her ovarian cysts. These unconventional methods range from bizarre dietary restrictions, such as eating only grapes in the belief that they would miraculously shrink the cysts, to delving into the mystical realm by attempting to enlist the aid of ghosts from the future through a miracle book she purchased. Veganism, too, became a recurring theme in her quest for a solution, although she later admitted that while she was claiming to be vegan only, she had eaten meat. On the 28th of April, Chantal announced that she had been to the hospital to get an EKG for her shortness of breath and leg pain. People speculated that even this diagnosis was fake and that she was trying to get sympathy points after her copyright strike tirade, but nothing was ever confirmed. By this time, it looked like Chantal had enough of the backlash she was receiving and she uploaded a video saying that she was going to quit YouTube. Um, I am leaving YouTube. I have one more video to upload and that will be the last one. But exactly nine hours later, she returned. In the ensuing months, Chantal's career became an incessant, never-ending repeat of the cycle. Whether it was the ketogenic diet or other dietary regimens, her efforts always fell short of what was needed to actually succeed and be healthy. Predictably, viewers noticed her very obvious missteps in adhering to these diets, leading to a spree of comments and reaction videos about how comically terrible she was at following these. Her response to the ongoing criticism remained consistent. In her frustration, she would resort to her increased familiar tactic of issuing copyright claims, deleting comments, and responding in absolute rage. But then, predictably, the cycle would reach its peak, where Chantal gets overwhelmed by the online uproar and announces her intention to quit YouTube. This had become such a recurring theme in her content that compilation videos cataloging her quitting statements had started to pop up after only a few months. It's crucial to note that amidst this recurring cycle, a significant development occurred in late 2019 when Chantal revealed she was scheduled for a hysterectomy for potentially cancerous cells in her body. Body. This announcement was accompanied by a disconcerting lack of consistency in her narrative, and details regarding the surgery seemed to shift continuously. In the lead up to the scheduled surgery date, Chantal uploaded mukbang videos featuring substantial food consumption, seemingly at odds with her impending medical procedure. Her health status and the fact she was eating crazy amounts of fat posed significant risks for surgery, particularly when coupled with the inherent dangers of general anesthesia. As the designated surgery date approached at the beginning of October, Chantal posted a brief video dressed in a hospital gown, announcing that the surgery had been postponed. This wasn't really a surprise to fans at this point, and most expected her to never follow through. She then uploaded Halloween Cheese Cemetery Mukbang, a video where she dressed up in a wig, ate copious amounts of gourmet cheese, and talked about the Heaven's Gate cult while flashing pictures of their dead bodies in between bites of cheese. You can probably guess what the general reception was, and the scrutiny only got worse. On November 1st, an article was published titled, A YouTuber Deleted a Video Which Showed Her Talking About Mass side while eating cheese, but she called much of the criticism false outrage. Even after years of being on YouTube, this was Chantal's first mainstream controversy that got her into pretty hot water. Avid Chantologists can be found quoted in the article, saying things like, These people primarily focused on the events they were talking about, giving facts and diving deep into the topic, he said. Chantal barely spent any time talking about the people that were involved in the crime, and while talking about the mass suicide of people, stopped to give a review of how amazing her pumpkin-spiced aged cheddar tasted. Chantal Chantal told Insider she never meant any disrespect with her video. She started her channel two years ago and used to do a series called Mystery Monday where she would make dinner and discuss an unsolved case. Most of my fans loved this and requested it again and again, she said. There were a few people who thought it disrespectful to discuss cases while casually eating. However, I found it to be no different than eating dinner and watching a true crime documentary. Ultimately, everyone who already knew about Chantal weren't exactly surprised by this, and while her channel experienced a brief loss of subscribers, things went back to the status quo not long after. By the end of November, the hysterectomy 
mastectomy surgery actually took place, but the specifics of the procedure remained an ambiguity. What was unmistakable was the change in Chantal's demeanor following the operation. Upon revisiting her channel, an abdominal scar became very noticeable, and she started to become more erratic. This was characterized by constant content generation and removal, along with the perplexing act of consuming food despite her visibly declining health. Celebrating the new year of 2020, Chantal spent the night alone in a hotel. Well, kind of. She says that she was invited to celebrate New Year's with a friend that she usually bailed on, so she got a hotel for two nights and was ready to go partake in festivities. But at the last moment, she says she started feeling down and decided not to go. Viewers theorize that this down feeling she got was a result of her recent hysterectomy and that she was in menopause. Chantal explains that while she's been in this hotel, BB has been working the night shift and that he wouldn't be able to spend the new year with her. This wasn't new information for people, but it did paint a picture of the frustrated BB. Chantal's channel barely pulled enough views to make $300 a week, so BB had to support both himself and Chantal almost entirely with his one job over the years. Meanwhile, she was in a hotel room, which, you know, cost money. While live streaming, the video suddenly cut out, but returned soon after. Chantal says she cut the stream because she got surprised by someone that walked into the room and revealed who it was in comical fashion. My last live cut out because somebody came in that I wasn't expecting. Guess who? Introducing. Hi. Pete's sharing a hotel room with her was a shock and concern to many, particularly when it came to what Chantal's relationship status with Bibi was. If Pete's was there with her, that meant Bibi was working a night shift on New Year's Eve while his girlfriend stayed with her ex in a hotel, and I doubt they were just mukbanging the whole time. Unsurprisingly, a month later, Bibi broke up with Chantal, adding credibility that this New Year's incident was the last straw that broke the camel's back. This wasn't the first time Pete's had been seen in Chantal's content, and he actually became a regular over the years, but staying in a hotel with her was probably what crossed the line for BB. It was also obvious that BB absolutely hated being filmed whenever he sparsely appeared in one of Chantal's videos. Every time he did materialize in a vlog, he would always have a thousand yard stare, and his facial expressions were usually that of disdain or embarrassment. BB never looked like he wanted to be around her. He always looked miserable. After BB dumped Chantal, he immediately kicked her out of his apartment, and Chantal stated that she will be moving back in with Pete's. Make no mistake, the two weren't back together as a couple, but because BB was the one who paid for rent and most of Chantal's expenses, she needed someone else who could do the same while she kept making videos. Following Chantal's official move-in, Pete's began to receive heightened attention on his various social media platforms. You can probably imagine what the internet would say after someone lets their ex stay with them in an apartment while still being separated, and some of the clips people had found led Pete's to be dubbed with the unfortunate title of c**k from here on out. And don't bother dieting. Diets are both. Oh yeah. But it's not, I mean, this not What like diets do is cause eating disorders. <laughs> screw up your diet. Uh, screw up your body. Yeah. <laughs> because your body doesn't know whether you're starving or uh, well fed. Huh? This attention seemed to be a little too much for Pete's, and he responded in a multi-tweet thread issuing his gripes. I was curious what my friend's haters thought about the recent videos I was in. Most of the comments were just boring, the usual c or simp crap that douchebags like to toss around, but a couple of things were ridiculous enough to deserve brief responses. Chantal does not, in fact, control my banana consumption. I didn't feel like having a banana right that moment. Aside from that one bag of ruffles, Chantal doesn't really steal my food. I keep my snacks in my room because it's convenient for me. Chantal and Pete seemed to get along fine for the next few months, but after a while, things started to get heated. When spring rolled around and the fungus was in full effect, tensions between the two began to brew. The lockdown had forced both of them to stay cooped up with each other, and eventually, they started to get a little stir-crazy. This tension reached its apex in September, when Chantal received an email from a troll threatening her with her family's docs, and signs the email, Charlie Mother Gold. Charlie Gold was one of Chantal's biggest detractors, and often made videos poking fun at her. Given their shared history, of past drama, upon receiving the email, Chantal immediately initiated a live stream where she not only accused Charlie of the act, but also went as far as to dub her Charlie Cole, asserting that she could spot a criminal from a mile away. So, lo and behold, I get an email, and it's like a threatening email, you're stupid, or whoever it was, it's definitely going to be traceable. So she's like, anyway, I don't think it's her because there was a quote by Sun Tzu in it, probably more too intelligent for her. But anyway, um... It's like, 
you better think again before making any community posts against me or anyone else you deem bullies on YouTube because you don't know what, what your critics, what information they have at their fingertips. I could just picture her writing like this. You better watch it because, and she put my mom's full name. She docks my mom, like her address and her phone number. I knew she would play dirty like that. It's only a matter of time till her true colors because she's a piece of sh So here's the thing, Charlie Cole, I dare you. For those of you that didn't notice, Charlie is a black woman, so Chantal calling her Charlie Cole and saying that she knows a criminal when she sees one didn't exactly receive the most positive reception, especially when it was shortly after the recent BLM riots. Viewers also pointed out that whoever sent that email could have been anyone and that just because they signed it with someone's name didn't mean it was them. Charlie denied sending any email of this, but was reasonable and accepted that this was all just a big misunderstanding. Close to the start of 2021, Chantal's health had reached the lowest it had ever been before. The past few months, Months had been a non-stop deterioration of her body, and she had been diagnosed with diabetes as well as continually losing her hair. Her attitude and usual patterns were rapidly changing. The topics she would bring up on her videos and live streams kept getting more and more sexual as time went on, and she had even talked about wanting to buy a male sex doll to sleep with. In February, she initially launched an OnlyFans account that was quickly abandoned, yet she continued to openly discuss sexual topics, going as far as considering hiring a male escort for her birthday. This trend and promiscuity would reach its tipping point when Chantal met up with with a fan named Frank on March 28th during a live stream titled Let's Be Frank. Frank clearly was just there to get a few minutes of fame, but for Chantal, this is what sent her on a never-ending love quest to find a new man. Soon after, she frequently hopped on live streams, regaling her audience with tales of the men she encountered on Tinder. According to her, these gentlemen consistently boasted wealth, fitness, and ample endowments, hailing from diverse backgrounds. None of this has ever been actually confirmed, and watchers started to wonder if these tales were as true as she said they were. This Tinder saga called culminated in Chantal meeting someone named Nick, who went on a car date with her for about 15 minutes. Chantal then got on a live stream describing in explicit detail how she enjoyed it when he groped her, they kissed, and that Nick had touched her belly. This relationship lasted for about eight days. After their first date, Nick would start ghosting Chantal and making up excuses as to why he couldn't go out that night, until Chantal just decided to block him after a week. After the success of this stream, though, Chantal transitioned primarily to live streaming, which resulted in a growing number of insane moments for her family. Fans. This shift to live content also meant that Chantal was unfiltered, and when it came to entertainment value, there was simply no contest between pre-recorded videos and the unscripted chaos of live streams. Anything could go down. These streams became a magnet for viewers, drawing in not only her dedicated hate watchers from the past, but also a substantially growing fan base of perplexed bystanders. Chantal's new love arc was looking promising, but even the most dedicated of haters or feeders could not have dreamed of what happened next. Chantal scoured through plenty of fish in search of another man to satiate her needs. It wasn't until April that her search was successful, and she dubbed this new prospect the Egyptian Man. On the 21st, Chantal took to a live stream to recount her first date with this enigmatic individual, all in front of Pete's, of course. As she puts it, this was no ordinary evening out. Instead of the conventional dinner and conversation scenario, things took an extreme turn. The Egyptian Man surprised her with an unexpected offer, a buffet of illicit substances, including Moroccan hash and coke which Chantal immediately accepted. And we get totally f***ing baked. And then he like break, this is, I don't want to say this, but you guys are going to be so, I don't do this on a regular basis. I don't even do it really, but I did it for some reason. I did it and it's not good to do. And if that changes your perception of me, I apologize. But I did like, he busted out like a bunch of lines of cocaine. What followed was an intense encounter marked by rough and aggressive sexual activity, according to Chantal. The Egyptian man left bruises all over her body, especially in one particular spot that she goes into detail about. He smacked my butt pretty hard. Uh, I'm not really into being sla slapped um, around, really, like a gentle slap, maybe, but I said, you're trying to kill me, please, <laughs> please. And then we would be talking and then all of a sudden he'd jump on me again and I'd be like, no. Obviously, devoted Chantologists were upset about the fact that she accepted a pretty hardcore drug from what was essentially a stranger at the time, but Chantal didn't care. She started referring to Egyptian man as just Dom soon after this experience due to, well, I'm sure you can guess. Chantal described how Dom constantly reassured her that he loved fat girls, and he kept showering her with compliments. It seemed that even though this guy was a little odd, Chantal was very much into him. Pete's had also voiced his displeasure after Chantal went into detail about her sexual activity in front of him, but she also didn't care about that. So... That was it. And then it was just really, really sensual. Um, a lot of making out and stuff, like what I like. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't like this guy. In the days immediately following her initial date with the Dom, Chantal continued to see him and went on to have four more dates at his house. Each of these encounters seemed to escalate in terms of substance use, with Dom introducing more drugs into the mix with each meeting. Dom didn't stop at just pushing the boundaries with drugs, he also repeatedly broached the subject of engaging in groups. On one occasion, he even went as far as inviting Chantal to participate in an orgy. Despite Dom's persistent suggestions and invitations, Chantal remained resistant to the idea of group sex. She was clearly uncomfortable with the concept and had no intention of doing anything in that realm. This unease kept getting worse during their third date at Dom's house. When Chantal arrived, she was surprised to find an unfamiliar man present. This stranger said hello and threw 50 bucks in her direction, brazenly asking her to expose her breasts because he thought that she was an escort. His friend, I sit at the table, his friend's so drunk. He throws money at me, like a 50. He's just like, let me see your boobs. <laughs> he thought I was an escort. Dom's friend kept making passes at Chantal, and she ignored them. And eventually, the two went on their phones, and Dom seemed to get jealous, asking her if they were texting each other and accusing her of flirting with his friend. His friend is like making passes at me and looking at me. And then I guess I was on my phone, and then his friend went on his phone. So Dom, he's just like, um, are you texting each other? I was just like, oh my God. He was being like paranoid, like, I don't know. And I'm just like, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. And he's like, no, I'm not. He's like, I don't, I don't care if you want to have, if you want to sleep with him, just be honest about it. Like, I don't care. Various spectators pointed out that Dom's friend being there was no coincidence and that he was trying to manipulate Chantal into the aforementioned group sex. Theories persisted that he might have even been trying to pimp her out to his other friends. In spite of that, Chantal spent the remainder of the night at Dom's house without his friend being present. As Chantal continued to share her dating and personal stories, the level of criticism directed at her steadily increased. Over time, some of them began to take a step back, even to the point of unsubscribing from her show. They had started to perceive a pattern in Chantal's behavior, one that appeared to to resemble the early stages of an abusive relationship. What struck them the most was Chantal's recurring cycle. No, not the Chantal cycle, but a completely new one with Dom. It seemed that she would frequently say that she was ending her relationship with Dom for good, only to backtrack on her decision within a few hours of recording. In addition, Chantal began to ingest cannabis-infused edibles at an exceptionally rapid pace. To fully comprehend the extent of her consumption, it's important to know that these edibles are typically recommended to individuals such as terminal cancer patients experiencing intense pain. In such cases, the dosage of cannabis edibles is carefully tailored to alleviate their excruciating discomfort, with amounts ranging from 2.5 milligrams to potentially exceeding 20 milligrams, depending on the patient's tolerance and the severity of their pain. Looking at what Chantal did made these dosages look like rookie numbers. On an average day, she was known to consume astonishing quantities of edibles, with her daily intake ranging anywhere from 250 milligrams to a staggering 500 or more. This downward spiral of drug use sank to new lows as the weeks went by. After being conspicuously absent for a duration spanning three full days, Chantal, appearing noticeably unkempt and jittery, decided to resurface to provide an update to her fans who had been wondering about her whereabouts. She then goes on to explain that for the last three days, she had been on a drug-infused non-stop bender with Dom. Details of this episode took place during a live stream on May 1st, 2021. During said stream, Chantal disclosed a litany of physical symptoms that she endured during her brief absence from her channel. These symptoms included things such as excreting orange urine, sensations of impending doom, and physical deterioration. What made this confession truly astounding was the sequence of events that Chantal recounted, detailing her descent into a meltdown of substance abuse. She began by saying that this all started with her well-documented habit of consuming potent edibles, which wasn't really a surprise. Yet this time, it wasn't just about the edibles. In her spurs between her episodes of intense consumption, Chantal admitted to snorting which also wasn't new, but still not a good thing. She then resorted to a method of drug ingestion known as parachuting, wrapping nearly a whole gram of ecstasy in a tissue paper and swallowing it in one foul swoop. The climax of this binge occurred when, in a haze of substance-induced confusion, Chantal stumbled upon a discarded and dirty pipe resting nonchalantly on a coffee table. Dom explained that this pipe was his friend's, and she could smoke it as long as she promised not to ask again. Now, faced with the decision of what to do, Chantal intelligently chose to discard this pipe in a rare moment of maturity. Maturity. Just kidding, she promptly smokes that shit. And what was in this mysterious pipe she had decided to smoke? You guessed it, it was meth. So I said, all right. And even as I was doing it, I was like, why would I do this? You know, like, oh my God. So he lit it up and I smoked it. Oh my God, it's the worst, worst taste. It tastes like burnt plastic. It was disgusting. And then when I like exhaled, I just felt like a, I don't know how to explain it.
In this confession, Chantal made a promise to be drug-free from here on out, raising eyebrows from fans as to how committed she would actually be. Hoping to move on and put it all behind her, Chantal inadvertently did the opposite right after this. Just seven days after the... the meth video, <laughs> she made a slip up by accidentally revealing part of her phone screen to the camera. Chantal was on the phone with Dom at the time, so audience members got a peek at what his actual name was. The screen showed Nader, and Chantal just got to work to uncover who this man really was. Seeing this, Chantal started to get scared that she doxed him, so she decided to draw a picture of him in an effort to dispel any curiosity from people. <laughs> this obviously had the reverse effect, and viewers actually used the picture to cross-reference everything named Nader in her area, finding his Facebook page and a picture soon after. In the subsequent weeks following the earlier incidents, keen-eyed members of Chantal's audience began to observe telltale signs that strongly suggested she was not keeping her promise of staying away from illicit substances. These signs included notable ticks and dilated pupils, which served as clear indicators of ongoing use. Whenever someone in her audience raised the issue of her apparent use or questioned her behavior, Chantal responded with anger and in some cases promptly blocked those who dared to broach the subject. This stubborn denial of her substance use, despite the mounting evidence to the contrary, eventually crumbled during a live stream confession. On June 28, 2021, Chantal broke down during one of her live streams and openly admitted to her cocaine addiction, conceding that her attempts to use it recreationally had spiraled out of control. The surprising twist in this was the unexpectedly supportive response from audience, who actually seemed to care when this was going on. In response to that support, Chantal pledged to take her addiction seriously and expressed her intention to seek professional psychological help to overcome this addiction. However, people kept noticing her still showing the classic signs of use soon after, leaving many to question the sincerity of her efforts to get clean. Furthermore, Chantal exhibited a rapid and alarming decline in her physical health, which is somewhat hard to do for someone who's already 400 pounds overweight. She experienced a suspicious amount of weight loss, shedding a staggering 60 pounds in just a few months. What was particularly striking about this weight loss was the lack of any apparent change in terms of diet or exercise. Observers closely linked her dramatic weight loss to her use, with little evidence to suggest that conventional methods of improving her health were actively pursued. Instead, these illicit substances, which were also appetite suppressants, seemed to dominate her life. Accompanied by her claims of engaging in numerous sexual encounters on a nightly basis, things kept getting worse on the early hours of June 8th, when an alleged near overdose occurred, an event Chantal herself referred to as that really bad night. After this, Chantal claimed to be receiving assistance from a family member, though the extent and effectiveness of this support remained unconfirmed, and her audience was left to speculate about the specifics of this intervention. By August, Nader had accepted the facts that everyone knew about him online, so he used this as a way to launch his own YouTube channel with the help of Chantal. It looks like when he wasn't getting super zoinked and effed up, he actually had a passion for cooking, creating cooking videos that sometimes featured Chantal, and making Chantal videos that sometimes featured cooking. After her visit to the hospital, rumors started circulating that she had gotten into a fight with Nader one night, and he got so mad while intoxicated that he beat her, but nothing was confirmed until the 6th. One of Chantal's lifelong friends, Shannon, got upset with her and posted, okay, don't call me when he beats you again, in her chat. Infuriated by this leak of information, Chantal banned Shannon, and just like that, a friendship that lasted what's assumed to be over 20 years ended. While she initially denied these claims, on the 14th, she essentially admitted that he had been abusive. I just wish so bad in like another universe that he wasn't abusive and he wasn't broke. I know that's bad, but I have to vent. On September 27th, Chantal went onto her stream and opened up even more about Nader's assault. She described a sequence of events that unfolded after a night marked by heavy drug use and gambling, during which Nader is said to have beat her. Chantal then claimed that she was subjected to multiple assaults and that Nader had stolen her phone. What followed was a litany of accusations, each one more crazy than the last. Things including filming an adult film without her knowledge and engaging in violence and non-consensual encounters that allegedly involved other physical harm. In addition, she claims that Nader had made threats against her life, threatened to harm her cat, and even yelled at her while she was driving, causing her to rear-end someone. Disturbed by these accusations, viewers immediately called the police, and they arrived shortly after. Chantal would get questioned by authorities, but decided not to press charges. Nader was apparently on probation, and had even been to prison in the past for stabbing two people, and she was scared that he would go to jail. I, I still have feelings for him. Those don't just go away automatically, but if he's on probation, and there's a police report filed against him, 
Will he go back to jail? I hope. I don't know. He said he would. I mean, I'm not looking to. I wasn't looking to put him in jail or ruin his life. It seems that viewers' previous concerns of Chantal entering an abusive cycle with Nader had become true. A new mini cycle had been created, and this persisted for weeks on end. Chantal pays for every expense in Nader's life, totaling several thousand dollars, whether it be drugs, food, or rent, without hesitation or question. Nader is Chantal's boyfriend, but Chantal is most definitely not Nader's girlfriend. Chantal is just his most lucrative and bountiful girl, whom he can tolerate in small doses in exchange for paying his cost of living. Chantal is but one of many women that Nader can call whenever he needs his kebab waxed. During a breakup period, while Chantal is at home seething and begging her audience for sympathy, Nader is out banging through his contact list and pretending Chantal does not exist so long as his rent is paid. On a positive note, this sentiment was disproved a few days later. Nader had seen how much Chantal had given him and was appreciative. He expressed a desire to give something in return, and on October 5th, he did just that by giving her the greatest gift of all, gonorrhea. I have gonorrhea, the clinic called. They swabbed my throat and it came back positive for an STD. I have a lot of mixed emotions. He denies any cheating and I know I didn't. On one occasion during his cooking streams, he even wiped his mouth after kissing her. Perplexingly, Chantal remained indifferent. In fact, she showed a genuine desire to move in with him in the future. Nadar shared this, but there were obstacles in his way. He was uncomfortable with the fact that Pete was still living with her and he couldn't stand her cat either. Consequently, he laid out some conditions, essentially stating that for them to live together, she would have to part ways with her ex-boyfriend and her cat. And I was telling her since she live with Beats, she's not my girlfriend. Since this day is done. She have this problem in her head every day up and down. Yesterday uh, blocking people, today doing another shit. He loved me yesterday, he don't love me today. This old I don't have a even damn shit with Beats. I don't care about him. He's heir to me. These terms were something that she was seriously considering, something that Chantal did frequently on her stream. Longtime viewers got upset about this and reached out in an attempt to remind her that in the few months she was with him, she had been cheated on, beaten, and was addicted to an illegal substance. Even so, it wouldn't matter in the end, because on November 9th, Chantal streamed another breakdown after Nadar and her got into a fight. She had left the house and started walking to the store, but he had apparently followed her down the street while constantly yelling. After this very public breakdown, talks about moving in together stopped altogether but this wouldn't stop Chantal from inevitably going back to being with him. At some point, Chantal had even said that Nadar got her a ring and that they were engaged, but on the 12th, he very much disproved this by revealing that she was the one who actually bought it. <laughs> See? That? He wants to be private about it, guys. Let it go. It's in the what past. The engagement ring. I'm not private about it. But that's what happened. Yes, I said you buy it, and after that... And you were going to pay me for it because it was, you wanted me to pick out a ring that I liked because it, it was, when we were doing good, it was going to be an engagement ring. Hello? <laughs> See? Sorry. What that? He's avoiding it. As winter descended, Nadar began live streaming with a woman who fans quickly dubbed Dee Dee. This mysterious new addition to the channel started appearing alongside him, effectively stepping into Chantal's role whenever the on-again, off-again couple found themselves in one of their frequent breakups. Apparently, Dee Dee used to be a fan of Chantal's channel, but it seemed that was not the case anymore. On January 17th, Nadar again began streaming with Dee Dee, but this time he kissed her live on the air while sharing wine. Naturally, this development didn't sit well with Chantal, but this fury wouldn't culminate until two days later. Initiating a new live stream, Chantal discussed his disloyalty and claimed that he had someone at his house right now as she was speaking. Simultaneously, he was also live streaming, seemingly unfazed by Chantal's accusations with a stream titled Let's Have Dinner, which he conducted with none other than Dee Dee behind the camera. These simultaneous live streams added fuel to the fire as Chantal's chat encouraged her to confront Nadar directly by going to his house to retrieve her CPAP machine. For those unfamiliar, a CPAP is a medical device used to treat sleep apnea, basically helping people breathe while they're sleeping. Chantal then decided to embark on this impromptu mission, arriving at his residence only to be met with a vehement refusal to let her in. Fueled by a potent mixture of anger and frustration, she resorted to honking her car horn and screaming, a spectacle that drew the attention of concerned neighbors who promptly called the police. As she continued her uproar outside Nadar's house, the police arrived on the scene. What followed was a live encounter between him and the cops, broadcast for all to witness on his live stream. It was a surreal moment, but eventually, Chantal successfully retrieved her CPAP machine with help from the cops after a never-ending back and forth. Following this incident, Chantal's relationship with Nadar actually looked like it was over. Culminating in what could only be described as a full-blown mental breakdown, she chose to publicly shave her head during a live stream. In that stream, she explained her decision by saying that she was balding anyway and that this was just getting a head start on the inevitable. However, it was apparent to many that there were deeper emotional problems at play. Chantal seemed profoundly affected by the fact that Dee Dee had now taken center stage in Nadar's life. Receiving the attention 
attention that she herself once held. Nadar and Dee had even started making a habit of mocking Chantal, with him going as far as showing off her underwear live on stream. No, sorry, this is not dress. <laughs> oh, you like this one? It has green in it. Hi guys! Hi guys! <laughs> like this? The dynamics of Chantal's relationship, coupled with her history of substance use, had undoubtedly taken a massive toll on her mental well-being. This wouldn't stop Nadar from continuing to exert his influence over her, as this all culminated when he convinced her to engage in oral sex with Dee Dee at her condo on the night of March 26th into the 27th. It was during this threesome that Chantal finally came to the painful realization that he and Dee Dee had been intimately involved throughout their entire relationship. The emotional turmoil resulting from this revelation spilled over into her subsequent trip to Cuba, which was sadly the day after her birthday. During her Cuban trip, Chantal's rage reached a boiling point, exacerbated by her excessive alcohol consumption. On her live stream, she openly discussed the disturbing details of that threesome, including graphic descriptions that left little to the imagination. Her vivid account included a description of Dee Dee's physical attributes, likening them to the color and taste of sardines. Has anyone seen grape? Like, is that like a thing? Like, what is grape? What is a grape? It's like sweaty balls. That's what it tastes. Like. Her fucking vagina tasted like sweaty balls, and you made me eat her out. I hope you're fucking happy. Once Chantal returned from Cuba, you can probably guess what happened next. Yes, that's correct. She again began seeing Nadar, but this time in a more low-key way. They began meeting at various hotels, with some instances where the accommodations were so peculiar that one may question whether they had stumbled upon a room with unconventional furniture, like a curious sex chair tucked away in the corner. Despite their efforts to keep their meetings discreet, a reaction channel dug deeper into the situation and went as far as calling a hotel where Nadar was seen streaming, confirming that Chantal was a registered guest at that hotel. Chantal didn't say anything for a bit, but by May 14th, she cracked and admitted it, not really surprising most. What did surprise a majority of people is what happened next. Dee Dee and Nadar, who had been a consistent presence in Chantal's life by now, not only officially announced that Nadar was claiming Dee Dee, but also that they were engaged in a BDSM relationship and Dee Dee had signed a contract. Obviously, Chantal was furious, and over the next few months, a recurring theme in her content became her relentless obsession with his relationship. Regardless of the clear indication that Nadar and Didi were committed to each other, or I guess, more closely that Didi was committed to Nadar, Chantal found herself unable to break free from her fixation. It was almost as if she had created yet another miniature cycle. Throughout this period spanning several months, Chantal consistently reacted to and made jabs at the BDSM couple, frequently making videos where she asserted that she was done reacting to their content, only to later be caught still engaged in watching their videos, thus perpetuating the cycle. This would continue until miraculously, she broke it in October. After almost a year and a half of constant torment and obsession, things finally looked like they were changing in a new direction. October can be described as the dawn of a fresh new era for Chantal enthusiasts, an era that is yet to be corrupted by illicit substance use or domestic abuse, an era of peace and prosperity, an era of Islam. Starting in early fall, Chantal had once once again begun e-dating and presumably had found a man already. A man that apparently was very easy to find because people found him almost immediately after they got a hint that she was talking to someone. His name was Salah and he was a dashing Arabic man from Kuwait with a killer smile. This Salah guy must have been quite the charm because it didn't take long into the month for Chantal to spill the beans that she was making changes to her wardrobe to better align with his cultural background. On October 5th, she announced that she'd started wearing a hijab. This move stirred up some commotion among her viewers, mostly because it sounded like she was just just doing it to impress this guy she was talking to. But fans were still curious about this new man, Salah, and a day later, Chantal delivered an explanation in a stream titled, Meeting My New Syrian Love. In it, Salah was in chat and could be seen interacting with people. Chantal goes on to explain that she's developed a new plan for her future. Originally, before meeting Salah, she had planned on moving out into a new house with Pete's, but after getting swept off her feet by the word of Allah, things had changed. She now said that she would be visiting Salah in Kuwait, and depending how it went, she could potentially be moving in with him permanently. This sudden announcement sent a surge of people immediately to Pete's channel that he had created a year prior. Pete had gained a reputation over the years to have a temper, and this case was no exception. Kuwait blocked. Hijab blocked. Let's throw in niqab. I'm getting fucking fed up with that. I've been ignoring it all stream for a reason. Fuck off of it. I'm straight up blocking Muslim. You know what? Fuck this. Like, Christ, just 
I'm blocking fucking Chantel. I'm blocking Chantel's name just because I'm so fucking fed up with people just going on and on and on and on and on and fucking on. Holy fucking hell, get the fuck over yourself. As the days sped by, things seemed to gain momentum, propelling Chantal forward at a breakneck pace. It had been just one month since she started a relationship with Salah, but it was around now that she decided she already wanted to marry him and share an apartment together in Kuwait. This rapid decision almost gave viewers whiplash, and everything was happening so fast, barely anyone could keep up. This quick choice was mostly disliked among Chantal's audience, and many viewers felt it was an impulsive decision. But, like most criticism Chantal had received over the years, it fell on deaf ears. People had also made predictions that this rapid marriage was Salah pressuring her, and that his true motive was to get a Canadian passport, but nothing thorough was proven as of yet. On November 2nd, Chantal was documenting her journey from Canada to Kuwait, as well as vlogging for the first time with Salah in person. Plenty of funny clips ensued, and it seems like Salah was a very blunt man when it came to what he thought needed to be done. Your diet, you forget? Yeah, I know. Well... You have to lose some weight. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a... No, guys, I really... Despite backlash from a portion of her audience, it seems like feeders enjoyed this change in location. Then again, it probably didn't matter where Chantal lived as long as she kept recording herself eating and burping on the daily. Hi, baby girl. Oh my goodness. Everything looks so good. I'm full and my mouth is still watering. What the heck is wrong with me? Lol, that warm bread looks so delicious. And you got me eating pickled vegetables with every meal. The hummus looked divine. The meat between the two pieces of thin bread looks so good. I'm glad you and Salah went out to eat and enjoyed yourself. It seems like now that I don't drink, I'm enjoying my food much more. Love you, Chantal. Chantal then gave a tour of their new apartment, and by January, she had already gotten married, as well as officially converting to Islam. At the end of the month, Chantal had to go back to Canada to get her things and officially move out. But there were just two main problems, Pete's and her cats. Pete's was, in many ways, the simpler of the two challenges. Salah's strict stance during Chantal's return meant that they couldn't even share the same room, so this rule effectively sent Pete's out of the condo soon after. He now had financial constraints and a past filled with joblessness, yet actually found a way to make it work, securing a room in Cornwall, and eventually even managing to get another work-from-home job to sustain himself for the time being. Even after almost 20 years of dedication and loyalty, to Chantal, Pete still got ejected from her life in the end, serving as a tragic lesson on the legacy of a simp. The larger and more emotionally charged issue for Chantal revolved around her cat, BBJ. The idea of euthanizing it had been brought up before in the past, but in the end, she couldn't bring herself to do it. Instead, she wanted to give away BBJ through a rehoming program. Hilariously enough, trolls somehow found a way to infiltrate this process. A popular foodie beauty commentary channel called French Fry Girl, or FFG, figured out where and what kind of program Chantal was giving away her cat in, so she had her brother claim the cat. I'm gonna miss you so much, but I'm gonna get updates all the time. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. I love you so much. Aww. Bye. Have a good one. You too? Anyone wanna know what happened when the door closed? <laughs> Because I could give you the perspective from the other side of the door if anyone's curious what exactly happened there when that door closed. That, everybody, was my brother at the bottom of that staircase. <laughs> Almost immediately, chaos ensued, and Chantal said that if FFG didn't return her cat to her, she would be calling the police. But ultimately, nothing came of these threats. BBJ is still in FFG's family's possession to this day, and is hopefully still in good health. After this small spout of drama, Chantal officially flew back to Kuwait and moved in with Salah. It's only been a few months since she had met him, and in just this short amount of time, her life had changed dramatically. Yet, it was all still the same. Today, Chantal still makes the same kind of content she's been making over the years. The only difference is a change in scenery. Even after such a dramatic change, she still reverted to her usual cycle that will no doubt continue on into the future as new drama emerges. Watching The Chronicles has truly been a fascinating experience for viewers. If there was ever a word to define her career, it would probably be insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result each time, yet only to be disappointed and get frustrated and go right back to step one. Her entire life, she's been eating too much food. Yet even when cancer starts to appear as a result, she continues eating the same thing. Her entire life, she's been with mostly toxic men who clearly were manipulating her, yet she continues to fall prey to them. It truly seems like Chantal is stuck repeating her cycles forever and has no real plans of stopping. To this day, she still makes mukbangs while paradoxically 
regularly uploading workout videos, still stuck in the cycle for now and for the foreseeable future. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, please eat healthy. Bye.